Hey everyone, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at the Intel 12400F. But I've got this new 6 core and it's only the performance cores, there's no E cores on it. I've taken this new 6 core Intel processor which is going to be coming in, well I'll talk to you about prices in a bit. And I've actually managed to get two identical motherboards, one DDR4, one DDR5. So where this process is going to be a bit cheaper, the boards are also going to be a bit cheaper because we're on B660 now rather than uh, uh, Z690. Again, do we need DDR5 yet? I think you know the answer, but I know those of you out there that still want me to say it. <laughs> So yes, the 12400F from Intel has arrived. It's a little baby i5 and it comes with a little price-ish because the little price that I was given by Intel was $167. Now when I saw $167, then with my optimistic head on, I thought, oh, we're gonna be getting it in the UK for about 150 GBP because on the original launch for processors, the dollar price was higher than the GBP price. But with this, it's kind of not good news. So the I've actually spoken to Scan on the day of launch, because that's when I'm filming this, I'm filming it again. Um, and they have confirmed that this, the distributor price in the UK is £167, which means then you've got all of the other prices that then go on top. And Scan are saying that they're going to be selling their 12400F for 199 GBP. So the Yanks get theirs, at least number-wise, for a bit cheaper than us in Blighty. But you do have to remember when they have to bring them in and then they have to pay VAT on it and all of that stuff. So it does get very complicated, but I did want to make sure that you did know a price. Now I do have identical B660M mortar boards from MSI to test on. The processor actually came to me from MSI as well, which was a godsend because our Intel, as in like the HQ and above, they actually had problems with shipping and then customs and they're late to the point where I actually haven't had a processor from Intel yet. I'm meant to be getting an i3 as well, so that will be coming later. Don't worry, I will be asking for the coolers because I want to test those as well. Anyway, I'm back with all of the testing when I can get it to test it. Anyway, so uh, B660 mortar Wi-Fi motherboards. The only difference between these boards is one takes a DDR5 or DDR5 memory, one takes DDR4 memory and £10 because the DDR5 board is £10 more expensive. This is actually the fairest DDR4 versus DDR5 comparison I've been able to do yet because the boards are so similar. So big props to MSI for doing this. I have to say it because they, at the end of the day, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be doing this review on launch day and I wouldn't be able to talk to you guys about it. So the 12400F, six P cores. That's it. There are no E cores. It does, however, have hyperthread in. So it's like the old school. You've got six cores and then you've got 12 threads. And they do say up to 4.4 gigahertz boost. And I have to admit the 4.4 gigahertz for me was almost consistent. It was actually very, very good in that regard. And it was turboing and boosting lovely all the time. And the performance between the two in reality if you were to kind of go back and look at older six core processors and stuff, that would probably be a uh, great thing to do. I mean, we've got lots of data in the graphs you to go and pick through with our uh, processors. But at the end of the day, the thing that I want to kind of try and be answering today is the DDR4 versus DDR5 quandary. And in reality, no. If you made me pick between these two now, I'd go DDR4 all day, mainly because the DIMMs are available mainly because you've probably already got some, mainly because they're cheaper to buy uh, if you had to buy new. So if you've got your 200 pound processor, you bought a 200 pound board, you don't then want to be spending 350, 400 pounds on some memory. Uh, it, it would just be crazy. You're gonna then wanna spend sort of like 150, maybe 200 pound again, so that you've got your board, your processor and your memory, and then you're gonna to want to rinse as much money as possible 
on your graphics card. Now I know that straight away is where people go, we can't buy graphics cards, but let's live in a hypothetical place where we are building a system that we want rather than we can get, and we have opportunities and purchases. So between the two, I would definitely go DDR4. You've seen everything popping up where it's saying to you, uh, there are very, very little differences. In reality, with DDR4, with the, uh, the latency differences, you can get, most of the time, even a performance increase over the DDR5. The rest is pretty much run tolerances. So uh, if you were going to pick between the two, then DDR4 is the puppy. Uh, when it does come to the six core processor, for 200 quid, it actually does really well. One of the things I will say is I personally didn't, because I, I test all of my processors exactly the same way, with the same cooler, so it's got a massive cooler on it, uh, which is a 360, which I know you won't do at home, but it's because we test them fairly. We have to see the difference between the two, because otherwise, if we change the cooler every time in the graphs, it's just not fair. Um, and I didn't get it to hit 60 degrees. It was crazy. So uh, with an air cooler, I did try it, and uh, again, it just, they don't get hot. It was just, it was happily sat, quiet fan, like not blowing the balls off of it. And it was sat at about 70 degrees, you know, there or thereabouts. It's actually a really, really nice little processor. It doesn't draw too much power. And the power is actually really good. Uh, it doesn't get too hot because it's not loads going under, underneath the hood. It's really good little processor. And one of the things I will say about when you think about the 360 mil uh, cooler, they literally were running at like 800 RPM fans. Like they, they did not spin up. It was like in full silent, re, uh, re, like really quiet mode. Um, so yeah, overall DDR4 versus DDR5, no, don't bother. Still stick with this, especially down at this end of the segment. Um, the other thing is you're going to want to know about gaming. Uh, if you're one of those gamers where you're looking for super, super, super high kind of like competitive frame rates, then you probably will notice a difference with this. But if you're kind of an average gamer at home where you just like playing games with your mates, you like going online, maybe you've got a 1440p monitor or your graphics card is 1080p based and you can't get turbo frame rates, that's literally the only time that you'll make it fall over or you'll notice a difference is when you're pushing for those 150 plus uh, frame rates compared to a 9900K. And you, you, know, you might slip down a little bit from that. But for most users at home, it is going to be more than ample. And I, I think at this present moment in time as well, if you did need to jump on this platform and go for it for a decent amount of money and then put a reasonable graphics card like a 3070 or maybe a 6700 XT on it, it would be a match made in heaven. Uh, so save your money on DDR4, spend more money on your graphics card, you're not going to need a massive cooler on it, just get yourself a decent nice looking case with a reasonable amount of airflow and it will serve you really well. Now yes, I have had to rattle through this video but it's because, I know I kid you not, uh, GMT wise on launch day it launches at 10 past 6. I think I'm going to be, I'm going to have to have a look now because I'm, I'm going to tell you, because it's nuts, it's 16.48, that's how uh, tight things have got because I've got prices and it changed things a little bit and I wanted to make sure that I did it again and give you the right numbers as well and now there's another courier at the door. Anyway, love you and leave you. Tiny Tom Logan out. Love you sis. Really, really quick. Yeah, see you later on. Bye. Hey.